Welcome back to Gothic Homemaking. My spooky friends, I have always wanted to make an episode of Gothic Homemaking called Epic Gothic Homemaking Fails, and I've always wanted it to air on April 1st, aka April Fool's Day. And yet somehow after all of these years, I've never managed to make that happen, which I guess is an epic fail all of its own. I don't need your help. That's right, I can do it all by myself. Wait, what? <laughs> Listen to that, you hear that? That ticking in the background is the radiator going off. Under normal circumstances, I'd have to stop filming and just wait for the heat to go off in this building. But not today, because this is the epic fails episode and nothing is as it appears on the lair of Voltaire. In fact, you might have the erroneous impression that I'm some master of DIY and that all of my projects turn out perfectly. But if you do, it's because I have the benefit of movie magic on my side. Through the wonders of editing, I can remove all of the mistakes and things seem to just move very smoothly and very quickly on DIY projects here on Gothic Homemaking, but things are not always as they appear. For instance, Look at these skulls behind me, these crows that are mounted on skulls. What you may not know is that they are very precariously balanced on these tiny little shelves, and they do very often fall off the shelf, onto the couch, and sometimes onto the floor, which is why some of the skulls look like this. Let's just say not all of my projects are all they're cracked up to be. <laughs> Today is a momentous occasion because I am finally going to bring to you my top 10 gothic homemaking fails. And we are going to start with a tasty one. You see, I've made lots of cooking and baking episodes here on gothic homemaking and I am neither a professional chef nor an expert baker. In fact, when I made my Harvest of Horror Pies episode, I had literally never baked a pie before. And it shows. So that's why we're going to start with epic fail number 10, ugly pie. Sure, the pies in the thumbnail look really pretty, but the first one I made looked like this. I tried to pretty it up with some candy corn, but nothing could save this dreadful looking pie. And opinions were unanimous. It's very ugly. You think so? It's ugly. That is terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> it was nonetheless delicious. The fact is, I'm not afraid to fail, because I learn more from failure than I learn from succeeding. So I actually welcome failure. It is an inevitable and necessary step on the path to success. So with that in mind, let's go to our next epic fail, number nine, the mystical vanishing legs and crumbling table. One of the most ambitious furniture making projects I did here on Gothic Homemaking the mystical vanishing chest and summoning table. And if you watch that episode, you would have the erroneous impression that I knew what I was doing. I didn't. I was really just muddling through trying to figure it out. Now, I started out with the impression that this storage unit that I had purchased must have some really strong, sturdy wooden interior structure, but it didn't. So I ended up attaching the wooden legs to what amounted to this tiny little wooden triangle. And in time, one of those legs became crooked. Every time I moved this table, it just got worse. Eventually the table was just leaning at all times. Anything you put on it just kind of rolled right off. Attempts to reattach the leg were unsuccessful, so I just ended up tearing it off. And in the end, I tore off all of the legs. Well, the table looked all right for a while. I mean, even without the legs, the table looks really great, but it was much harder to move. And then one day while dragging it across the floor of the lair, the coffin handle snapped clean off. I mean, the metal shattered, it is broken, it is ruined, it's garbage. Luckily, while I was in my storage unit recently, I discovered that I have a few extra of these, so I might just fix it. Remember folks, if you have the power to make something, you probably have the power to fix it. So we might do just that. Our next fail is one that I can really lean into. Shutting the door on cutting the door. You may not know this about the Lair of Voltaire, but this building is leaning at a harrowingly accelerated rate. Uh-oh. How do I know that? Well, a couple of years ago, I went to open the front door. Shut your front door. I went to open the front door and I couldn't. It was 
jammed. I mean, I could not get out of here. I was trapped in the lair of Voltaire. I pulled with all of my might, but it would not budge. I could not get it open. Now, I don't need to tell you how dangerous that is. If there was a fire here at the Lair of Voltaire and I couldn't get out, well, shut up. Don't say it. Well, good. <laughs> well, I decided to pull out my trusty grinder and try to remove the bottom one inch of this metal door. Suffice to say, it was not the most successful part of my daily grind. Sure, those sparks are pretty, but pay close attention to the smoke and the metal dust that's accumulating. In the end, someone had to smash the marble saddle with a hammer, and now the door opens, but not all the way. It was just too difficult and too dangerous for me to cut through that metal door. Honestly, I think it needs to be taken off its hinges and cut by a professional. Folks, if you're ever doing a DIY project and you feel like it's beyond your means and you may even be getting yourself into a dangerous situation, step aside. Don't let your pride get in the way. Hire a professional who has the right skills and the right tools. And, uh, Speaking of tools, Epic Gothic Homemaking fail number seven, the wrong tool for the right fool. Here at Gothic Homemaking, we do our very best to use the very best tools, but it doesn't always work out that way. Especially around Halloween, when you buy those cheap pumpkin carving tools from places like Target or Kmart. Here's a clip from an episode called Her First Jack Lantern, an easy pumpkin carving tutorial to show you just how bad they can be. Okay, see? A real knife for a real man. Oh. <laughs> oh my god, I'm so off course. Look at this thing. Look at this thing. <laughs> Maybe I'll try this one again here. Unbelievable. <laughs> Just unbelievable. Maybe it has to be not that deep. Look at this thing. This 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 knife is useless. <laughs> <laughs> you get what you pay for. <laughs> One dollar. <laughs> and in this clip from a Christmas DIY video, you can watch me use a pair of scissors that you could say wasn't really cutting it. Now this was a real comedy of errors as you can see this scissor had one job <laughs> and it could not do it i mean not at all look at this it's ridiculous i eventually gave up and realized that the cutting of the ribbon was just going to have to happen off camera and because I have no shame whatsoever, I then set it up to make it look like I easily cut the ribbon using movie magic. Behold, why I haven't thrown away or sharpened those scissors, I can't really say. Yeah, I may just need to own that one. <laughs> Especially when you see this next one. This was truly a boneheaded move on my behalf. Number six, a boneheaded bone rack. You might recall a while back, I made an ossuary towel rack for my spooky kitchen. I was really, really pleased with the way it came out. It had this really beautiful, antiquated Victorian look. But I thought to myself, wouldn't it be cool to do kind of like a rustic, horror-themed, Texas Chainsaw Massacre kind of version? So I set out to do that. I got a replica human bone and some metal brackets. Then I found myself some black annealed wire and I attached the bone to the brackets with the wire. Now to give it that rustic horror look, I got myself some twine and I dipped it in a combination of Elmer's glue and water. Now I started wrapping the twine around the bones and I was just about done when I suddenly realized that in doing so, I had covered the holes that you'd need 
in order to attach it to a wall. So in essence, I guess what I ended up really making was a paperweight. Yikes! And if you think this thing's bad, check out this next project which never even got started. Number five, Blue Bee Boo Boo. Many years ago, I made an episode called Decorating with Insects. And in that episode, I found myself in Los Angeles at a place called Bearded Lady Vintage and Oddities. While there, I found these really curious blue bumblebees that gave me a really great idea for a project. And at the end of that episode, I said something like, tune in next time when I show you what I did with those blue bumblebees that I bought in a DIY insect decorating project of my own. Yeah, well, let me tell you what I had in mind. <laughs> Around that time, I had made another episode about oddities markets. And while I was there, I saw these beautiful shadow boxes that contained moss and bones and animal skulls and things of that nature. And I thought, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to grab some shadow boxes. I'm going to fill them with moss and bones, maybe like small animal skulls and, and, and some honeycomb. And I'm going to attach the blue bees to the skulls and the honeycomb. And it was just one of those things that was just a disaster from the beginning. So I went out and I bought the shadow boxes from Michaels. And then I bought some small ethically sourced animal skulls and some moss and some other things. Ultimately, I finally had all of the, all of the things I needed for this project. And that's when I discovered that none of the animal skulls fit into the shadow boxes. All of the shadow boxes were just a bit shallower than I needed them to be. So I tried cutting one of the skulls and, and I just broke it. And I just became so disheartened that I abandoned the entire project. And, and I can't explain it any other way. My brain just shut down when I realized I couldn't make what I saw in my mind. And now the worst part of all of this isn't even that the project never got made. The worst part is that to this day, many years later, there's still people who write to me who say, when are you gonna show us what you did with those blue bees? And it's really annoying because it reminds me of my failure and my inadequacy to bring this project to light. And I have no one to blame but myself because in the end, what I learned is that you should never, ever, ever promote a project with a great deal of pomp and circumstance and confidence if you're not entirely certain that you're going to do it because you're just going to disappoint a lot of people. And double jointed. <laughs> what? One of the other things I learned is that it's very dangerous to have a very rigid idea of the project that you're making. You know, you have to be a little bit flexible. You have to let the project organically be something else if it wants to be something else. You have to be flexible. Um, otherwise, what happened to me could happen to you where your entire project just shuts down because it's not going to turn out exactly the way you envisioned it. But you know, if a project is frustrating you, it's okay to walk away from it. That's okay too. You can't do it all. And speaking of doing it all, number four, Gothic Home Alone Making. You probably will not be the least bit surprised to know that this show is made primarily just by me and my phone. Sadly, this isn't a real TV show. There's no crew. There's nobody filming me where I can focus on what I'm doing. It's just me and the phone. Very often, I'm holding the phone while manipulating things with my one hand that's free. And I gotta tell you, when you're trying to manipulate things with your hand, but you can't look directly at it, you have to look at the phone, there's a certain disconnect like when you're trying to cut your hair in a mirror. And let's just say that it is made for some very awkward situations. Take a look. Don't break anything, Voltaire. Oh my God, Voltaire. Oh my god. Oops. <laughs> Oh, 
I mean, do I need this? No. Can I have a Benzie Kids Associates Register 11? Benzie Kids Register 11? But it's $16.99, it'd be kind of stupid not to get it. Now here I'm trying to create one of my fancy edit points, but in order to do that, I have to be able to find the center of the lens, which is apparently harder to do than it seems. Third time's a charm. Oh, and it's so much more fun when it involves food and liquids. You gotta get a little crazy. Half an ounce, half a shot of that. Oh. <laughs> Sometimes I wear sunglasses while shooting so that you can't see that I'm looking at the camera for framing. And well, that doesn't always work out so well. Don't worry, I bought those so that no one would put them on their kids' cupcakes. Then of course there's all of my surprise guest stars with walk-on rolls. Oh my gosh. But if you're persistent, you can find some sh towels that are good for the lair. Like, I thought these were rather cute. Oh my, what the? Thanks, kid. Thanks, dude. Seems there's always someone trying to get in on the action. And once in a while I film something only to discover when I get home that there's some creeper in the background looking at me the whole time. <laughs> Cheers to that. I always feel like somebody's watching me. <laughs> Listen, if this were a real TV show and there was a real crew, it'd probably be a much higher quality show. But it is what it is. It's just me and a camera. And I gotta tell you, there is a certain freedom and a certain luxury and a certain joy to showing up somewhere and getting an idea and whipping out the camera and making content on the spot. So for the time being, I hope you don't mind, it's gonna stay that way, and I'm gonna keep making this show for you all on my own. You're not helpful. <laughs> One of the most popular episodes of Gothic Homemaking of all time is my Gothic bathroom renovation episode. But what you guys may not know is however beautiful that gothic spot turned out, that room is a vortex of calamities. So much has gone wrong in that room, which is why Epic Fail number three is going to be based on the bathroom. But there's so much wrong that we're going to take it one calamity at a time, starting with, of course, the black glazed tub. In that episode, I was warned by the guy who glazed the tub that if it chipped in any way, if it got scratched, if anything happened in there, the water would get under the paint and it would all just start to come apart. So I've been very, very careful. And you may even remember that at the end of that episode, a curtain rod fell. Oh, and it did indeed make a little chip. Now there's been enough accidents in there at this point that there are several tiny little white dots here and there where the black glaze has chipped. Nothing too severe. Uh, of course, where the water comes down full force, and I take very hot baths, so very hot water blasting out of the, out of the faucet, 
onto the drain. That's an area that has lost the most amount of glazing, but so far everything's okay. And there is a simple solution. Every once in a while, I just dab a little bit of black nail polish on those spots. And up until now, the tub glazing has remained in fairly good shape. Another hair raising experience that makes me want to die is when I dye my hair in the bathroom. As you can see, I just finished dyeing my hair, and I will say, I do a remarkably good job. I get very, very little of the dye on my ears, on my scalp, like really, I do a really good job. But there is splatter. As I'm combing the dye through my hair, you will get little dots, like these dots on the mirror. They're little drops of dye from the last time I dyed my hair. This mirror needs to get repainted. It is really, really dirty at this point. Oh man, what happened here? When did that happen? Well, I guess the door will have to be painted too. I love to take long, hot baths, and when I do so, I love to burn incense, especially now that I have this coffin-shaped incense burner from the Lair of Voltaire. Now, I recently discovered that the incense, the smoke from the incense would rise and started to stain the top of the little alcove that I put the incense burner in. But even worse, it had stained the wallpaper above it. So I foolishly decided to try to clean the wallpaper with a little bit of detergent and a sponge and quickly realized that harsh detergents and sponges take the paint right off of this spoon flower wallpaper. So now the wallpaper in that area is sadly bleached. In the process of renovating my gothic bathroom, I made an episode called How to Cover Ugly Steam Pipes. You're gonna find this very, very hard to believe, but this is nonetheless true. The very next day after finishing that elaborate steam pipe, my neighbors flooded my bathroom via the steam pipe. Water came pouring down via the steam pipe. So needless to say, at the top of the steam pipe, the ceiling was wet and it was chipping and there was dust everywhere. I'm sad to say that while cleaning the bathroom, I broke one of my very favorite decorations. But that's not even the worst calamity in my bathroom. There is a fungus among us. And that is why Epic Fail number three is called my Gothic Bath Shroom Renovation. About a week later, a hole appeared in the center of my bathroom ceiling. I touched it and it was mushy. Yeah, and what's worse is that it was pretty obvious that there were mushrooms coming out of that hole. I covered the hole with some tape, but it was obvious the ceiling was gonna have to be taken down. Well, how do you do that without ruining that beautiful wallpaper? I covered the top of the wallpaper with blue painter's tape. And as you can see, I emptied all of the cabinets, I got rid of all the decorations, and I took down all of the framed objects from the wall. I put everything in the tub where it would be safe, and then I covered all of the walls with plastic. I covered the bathtub, and I even covered the steam pipe. The landlord's handyman came and he fixed, of course, only the tiny piece of the ceiling because that's how it's done around here. And it rained all sorts of nonsense onto my bathroom floor. Now, I gotta say, inside of the ceiling, it was not as bad as I thought it would be. It didn't appear to be full of mushrooms, but it was pretty gross. However, a week later, mushrooms started to grow from behind my wallpaper. And I gotta say, they were pretty handsome mushrooms, quite the specimens. These were quite delicious in a salad that I made that week. I'm kidding, you should never eat mushrooms you find in your bathroom. To get rid of them, I unpeeled the wallpaper. This is peel and stick wallpaper, by the way. And I cleaned the mushrooms as best I could with some alcohol. Now the paper doesn't really go back on per se, but I grabbed some Mod Podge and I painted that onto the wall and that allowed me to reattach all of the wallpaper. In the end, it looked all right. It was not perfect, but better than I expected. And now my gothic bathroom is safe and sound. And speaking of sound, that brings us to epic fail number two, awful audio. The Lair of Voltaire is in an old East Village tenement building and we face the street and we're only one flight up from street level. So we hear absolutely everything that takes place out there and in here. Now, for that reason, I can only shoot episodes of Gothic Homemaking from about midnight to 4 a.m. on Sundays and Mondays when the East Village is at its quietest. And it is still 
noisy as hell out there. I have literally hundreds upon hundreds of hours of footage of me waiting for traffic to stop or bums to stop fighting or rats to stop screeching so that I can get a take in without an interruption. The fact is, shooting here at the Lyra Voltaire on Gothic Homemaking, we are interrupted by all manner of rubbish and more often than not, the trucks that pick it up. Take a look. Or is that a listen? Ratatouille voiceover for Jack Lantern episode. And the sound of a garbage truck, if we need that for something. No. Okay, cut. Waiting for a garbage truck. How does this look? Wonderful. <sighs> garbage trucks. Waiting for traffic? Mm -hmm. Hold on, wait for traffic. It's like nothing but garbage trucks at this hour. And garbage men, apparently. I cannot believe how long these garbage trucks are going on for. Like, how many garbage trucks do we need? Mayumi is vastly more patient than I am. I just love that I'm getting all riled about the sound of garbage trucks and she's just like lovingly admiring these Christmas ornaments. But it's not just garbage trucks that interrupt us here at Gothic Homemaking. Take a listen. We'll be using these paper baking cups I found at Joanne's last Halloween. I found these... I found... This is like that English TV show, Upstairs, Downstairs. There's always somebody going upstairs or downstairs. We got traffic outside, upstairs neighbor walking around on creaky floorboards, and someone in the hallway. What are the chances? What do we need? A garbage truck and a bum fight to really... And maybe some rats. That's not a joke. There are so many rats on the street in front of Valera Voltaire that we've literally had to stop shooting until they stop squealing. It's a true story. I used to find it very, very disheartening until I just convinced myself there were bats there and, and now I feel a little bit better about it. But to be honest with you, there are vastly more odious things that interrupt shooting here on Gothic Homemaking. I've been making a concerted effort to cut down on the amount of plastic I buy. Gosh, I hate reggaeton. And as often is the case, some of the most amazing things I found. Yuppies! Yuppies. Cut. It's remarkably easy to make. Just pull it out of the box and wait for the motorcycle. Just cut. When I'm doing my Halloween home decor hunting, I'm looking for high quality farts. <laughs> High quality motorcycle farts. Only the finest Harley Davidson farts for that fine bouquet. Oh, for crying out loud, cut. <laughs> Jesus. Mayumi Toyo! Motorcycle. My Motorcycle. Motorcycle. <laughs> and there we go. It's waiting for traffic. And action. Mayumi Toyota, what are you doing here? <laughs> Mayumi made it back just in time for Dragon Con. What's that? Somebody's got faulty brakes. Mm. And action. We got a, a car. I don't know what that is. The space shuttle is landing outside. And then there's construction. They say that here in New York City, there's three seasons, summer, winter, and construction. And I have to tell you, I have literally had to stop shooting Gothic homemaking for a stretch of weeks because this is what it looked and sounded like just outside of the Lair of Voltaire.
And whatever you do, don't pray to God that the construction ends because then you just might get church bells at 4 a.m. Yeah, I cannot make this stuff up. And in case you've ever wondered why I never shoot live sound outside of New York City, this might give you an idea. Times Square, the great white way. If you come to New York City, you're obviously gonna wanna come to Times Square, but please do not spend your entire vacation here or you will really miss out on the dark delicacies that Gotham City has to offer. However, while you're here, if you can afford it, I would strongly suggest catching a Broadway musical. We presently have three monster-based musicals. Hey, book, book. Times Square, the great white way. If you come to New York City, you'll obviously want to check out Times Square. But please do not spend your entire vacation here or you will miss Times Square. Times Square, the Great White Way. Of course, if you come to New York City, you're gonna to wanna to check out Times Square, but please, for the love of Cthulhu, do not spend your entire vacation here, or you will miss out on all of the dark delicacies that Gotham City has to offer. However, if you can afford it, while you're in Times Square, I would strongly recommend you take in a Broadway musical. We presently have three monster themed. Recently, while at Transworld Halloween Trade Show, I had an opportunity to interview a couple of my favorite Halloween-obsessed colleagues, and I could not use the interview because it sounded like this. What kind of videos can we look forward to coming up on Wicked Makers? Let's see, we got more animatronic makeovers coming. We've got definitely some Transworld videos coming, some highlights and things like that. Yeah, you know, we've... There's a lot of stuff that we saw here that we're gonna probably try to make our own version of, you know? So like some different props and some effects. That's kind of what we do on our channel is we make stuff, right? So we, we show you how to make stuff that we probably don't know how to make already. So we kind of do it together, we figure it out. And uh, yeah, so there's gonna be a lot of neat stuff coming this year from this show that we love. It really hurt me that I couldn't use that interview and other interviews that I filmed at Transworld. And this is what I'm gonna say about that. My friends, if you are working to the very best of your ability, and if you are spending as much money as you can reasonably spend on your hobby, on your art, whatever it is that you're working on, then you are not failing. You are succeeding at being the very best you can be, and you need to feel good about that. However, if you could spend a little bit more money, but you're just not doing it, or worse, if you really could take some time to learn some new skills and to make yourself a, a better artist and you just don't think you have the time or you're just being lazy, then you are failing. And that is why awful audio is the second biggest problem here on Gothic Homemaking because I could find the time to make it better and I just haven't. So hopefully I'm going to improve on that. Well, that's refreshing. And that brings us to the number one most epic gothic homemaking fail. And that is... Funny you should say that. But no, it's a shame of thrones. Well, we're going to talk about this one from a different throne. Follow me. This is my new Devil Throne that I recently purchased from a place called Throne Kingdom in Brooklyn, New York. Now the reason I have room for a new throne is because the one that was here before got destroyed. Again with my face, that's very ironic. And I'm gonna tell you why in just a minute. Now, the best way to tell this story is probably through a little anecdote. You see, the very first time I saw a Gothic throne was in a goth club in Los Angeles, California. And I don't remember the name of it, it was, I think it was in Chinatown, but in the back there was this dark room and I just remember going in and it was five or six Gothic thrones. And I was so enamored with them upon seeing them that I went running across the room and I just like plopped myself into one and nearly split my ass in half. Well, I guess it already is sort of split in half. I nearly split my butt in fourths. <laughs> Honestly, I plopped down into this chair. It had no cushion. Whatever cushion it had, had deteriorated. And I don't know if I hit like the wooden beam or if I hit the floor itself, but it hurt. And well, that was foreshadowing. Now over the course of Gothic homemaking, Gothic thrones have played heavily in the design of this room. And you've seen me purchase them in an episode called A Shame of Thrones. 
But what I learned through the process, and you may not know this, is that these thrones have a shelf life of about four to five years. And so the throne that was here before, well, the cushion started to deteriorate and I could have gotten it reupholstered, but it's such a nightmare to get these in and out of the lair that I just let it go. And ultimately the cushion was gone and then the supports on the bottom broke and it was in really, really bad shape. And I just gave it to a friend and purchased a new one. Now the chaise lounge over here that you've become very accustomed to seeing me sit in, you might recall that I had to cut the legs off of that one just to get it into the lair and that really hurt my soul. But what you don't know is that just one week after getting that chaise lounge I was painting in here and a couple of drops of paint fell on it and while I tried to clean them off I tore the upholstery. It was just a tiny little tear but over time that tear got bigger and bigger and bigger and well, you may notice that there is a satin sheet over that chaise. It's always been there and it's there for a very specific reason, to hide just how bad the upholstery's gotten. Now I'm gonna show you that in a second, but let me just tell you that when you let it go, it really, really goes. And so the upholstery tore and then the cushion just started dis deteriorating and by the end of it, it became so uncomfortable that I stopped inviting people over to the lair because I didn't want them to sit there because they'd realize just how bad it had gotten. And I'm gonna show you right now just how terrible that chaise lounge has become. But uh, let's move some of these cushions first. And the reveal. Just look at this thing. It's got a huge gash in it. The cushion is just completely sunken in and uh, it's even worse underneath. Take a look. You can see here the place where I broke the legs to get it in the front door. That part held up surprisingly well. The bigger issue is here. With the cushion having deteriorated, the weight of people sitting on the chaise lounge snapped the main support beam. Needless to say, it's the end of an era for gothic homemaking as this beauty went in the trash. Luckily, I had some help from an old werewolf friend of mine. Nonetheless, it was really sad to see our old friend out on the street. I'm of the belief that if you reupholster this type of furniture every four or five years, you can extend the life of it for years and years to come. But because I chose not to do that, that is why epic fail number one is A Shame of Thrones. Now there is one extra epic fail here. Uh, it is an honorable mention and sadly, it might be the very, very saddest one of them all. Orville sort of hinted at it earlier. Ladies and gentlemen, it might finally be time to bury our friend Orville Dedenbacher. Yes, unfortunately, Orville's face has been decomposing at a rapid rate and I'm honestly not sure how much longer he'll be around for. Uh, you only look great because this footage that we're looking at, I shot two years ago. <laughs> what? Yeah, and that's not even you up there. I shot that footage two years ago, too. Word? This is actually you here. Yikes! <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this episode of Epic Gothic Homemaking Fails. And I hope you will join us next time when hopefully we'll have a cheerier episode. Until then. Well, that's refreshing. <laughs> and that brings us to the number one most epic gothic homemaking fail. It was the Millennium Falcon. <laughs>